you for coming to the virtual launch of the Anti-Racist Kitchen 21 Stories and Recipes. My name is Nadia Alhan. I am the editor of this wonderful collection and I'm so excited to share that it is out in the world today. We are celebrating this brand new book that is being launched. So I hope you will pick up a copy today. What if talking about racism was as easy as baking a cake, cooking rice, or frying plantain. The Anti-Racist Kitchen is a middle grade anthology and cookbook of sorts. It combines 21 recipes plus one, that is my mom's Jamaican cornmeal pie. All right, so today we're gonna to be making some cornmeal pie. I have the ingredients I'll be using today. And these are the ingredients I like to normally put in my own porridges. Of course, you can make it any way you want. And I grew up saying porridge as porridge. Porridge is more of a Jamaican way to say it. I had no idea that was the same drink that the Goldilocks and the Three Bears were eating. Because we said it porridge, not porridge. So in my porridge, I like to put... Uh, Pimento, also known as allspice. Pimento is what we call it in Jamaica. And you can buy it ground or whole. And it looks like this. If you have it, it actually looks like this. And it can be quite expensive. So you can go to um, uh, like a West Indian or Caribbean store. You might be able to find it at a good rate. Um, we have whole nutmeg here as well, which is another spice I like to use. You take a look. Um, you, if you don't have time to grate the whole nutmeg into your porridge, you may want to use the ground nutmeg, which is pretty easy to find in the baking section. I also have some cinnamon sticks. All right. I also have pure vanilla, and we have cornmeal, which is uh, used, of course, in this. And then, of course, we have some condensed milk. I don't drink dairy milk normally, but I do make um, exceptions here and there. So this is used as a sweetener. And also we have my almond milk, which is my uh, milk of choice. Uh, it's unsweetened. And if you use another type of milk, like oat milk, rice milk, soy milk, oat, um, I think those are pretty much okay. Cashew milk. Uh, I've never made porridge other than with the dairy milk or the um, almond milk. So I can't speak for how it's going to turn out. But I presume it will taste just fine. And then of course we have some water here as well. So we're going to get started. Just made some, try to finish it all up or give it away, and I hope you enjoy. Mm. And it combines photos and experiences, and it also illustrations about how we overcome racism. And part of that is through talking. What if talking about racism was this easy, as cooking rice, frying plantain. Let's take a moment to talk to some of the contributors of the Anti-Racist Kitchen and hear what they have to say about sharing their stories and recipes with us in this collection. Hi, I'm Ainara Aileen, and I am so honored to have been asked to add a foreword to this beautiful book, The Anti-Racist Kitchen, edited by the incredible Nadia Hone. As soon as I heard the idea behind this book, I knew it was going to be a household favorite. 
The thing I love most about the anti-racist kitchen is the balance between the fun and brightness while also bringing light to some serious subjects like activism and racism. This book is perfect for everyone in the family. The fantastic illustrations are so vibrant and the short stories are not only heartwarming but open the door for some really important conversations that I think will be beneficial for parents and kids. And last, but of course not least, the recipes. Food is a way to bring people joy and bring them together, which is definitely demonstrated in this book. Making these recipes with your family, friends, or even by yourself will be so much fun and definitely delicious. I can't wait for everyone to consume the lessons and food found inside the Anti-Racist Kitchen. Hello, my name is Wabagijik Rice. I'm a member of the Bear Clan of the Anishinaabek of Wasaksing First Nation on Georgian Bay, where I'm joining you from right now. It's a great honor to be invited to speak on my experiences contributing to the Anti-Racist Kitchen. I was very pleased and very humbled to have the invitation to contribute. It is a very important initiative and it's a collection that I think will enlighten and inform on a variety of experiences and also help share food in a good way, uh, which I think a lot of the cultures that you'll find within the collection uh, really celebrate in terms of bringing people together and celebrating our unique gifts that we have to offer the world. So I just wanted to say chimigwech to Nadia Hone and the rest of the team who brought me on board to uh, share my little story. Hi everyone, my name is Ayelet and I would like to tell you why I love this book. First, this cover, she's just so gorgeous and looks like the kind of dinner I would love to be a part of. The second reason is how deliciously this book smells. And if you haven't done that yet, I highly recommend sniffing it and inhaling it. It's just delicious as it should be, considering it's a book filled with amazing recipes. And finally, this picture, which accompanies the recipe that I contributed to the book, which is, um, a picture of Yemeni Jewish people having a Shabbat meal. And it may seem like a small thing, but growing up, I've never seen pictures like that or stories like that in the children's books that I love to read. Um, so that's the main reason why I wanted to be a part of this book, because it's a children's book that is inclusive, that is diverse, and that has space and room for everyone. What made me want to be a part of a book like this? Oh my goodness, it's a literary potluck of recipes from all over the world by writers from whose families are from all over the world. And I just think that that's amazing. I think it's great to come together with other people and make something tasty and to feed people that we love and to share with people that we love. So I am so honored to be a part of this. Hello, my friends. My name is Natasha Dean, and I'm one of the authors for The Anti-Racist Kitchen. And when I think of growing up, I think about my grandmothers teaching me how to cook, and they would measure with their hands. How much flour do you need? This much. How much baking powder do I need? This much. And then, you know, when the smells would fill the kitchen, they would say, mm, you smell that? It needs more salt. Do you smell that? It needs more pepper. And so growing up with my grandmothers, my aunties, my mom, you know, cooking was love and it was laughter and it was being surrounded by these strong, beautiful, intelligent, funny women who were teaching me how to cook with all of me, not just measuring something and putting it in the pot. And so when I had the opportunity to share one of my most beloved recipes, which is the cake, the cake that my mom made, the bully, I really wanted to because this is a recipe that my mom gave me, that her mom gave to her, that my grandmother's mom gave to her. And so I hope you try the recipe. I hope you love it. Uh, and I hope you try all of the recipes in this amazing book. 
Hi, I'm Ruth Behar, and I'm really thrilled to be part of the Anti-Racist Kitchen. I think this book is wonderful. It's filled with great stories and great recipes. I've already started trying several of them, and they're really great. And I contributed a recipe uh, that my mother makes, uh, Mommy's apple, apple and Guava Cake, um, Guava or Guayaba in Spanish, and that's a tropical fruit. Um, that's uh, grown and eaten all over uh, Latin America. Uh, and the word guayaba uh, comes from a Taino word actually, so it, it harks back to indigenous origins. And uh, anyway, we came from Cuba to the United States. I was an immigrant child when we arrived and started uh, hearing about apples and how that was the fruit of Americanness and you're as American as apple pie. And, um, but we didn't want to let go of our tropical heritage, our Cuban heritage, and so my mother came up with this recipe, mixing together uh, the apples of the United States with the guayabas of Cuba, and holding on to our heritage, not letting it go, making it part of a delicious cake. Hello, my name is Anne Yu Kyung Choi. And what I love most about The Anti-Racist Kitchen, 21 Stories and Recipes, is that a group of authors came together to collectively advocate for racial equity and inclusive spaces, and did so by inviting readers into our kitchen. Growing up, the food that my family ate was one of the first things that made me feel like an outsider, something a lot of young people continue to experience. This is why, for me, this book is so important. By sharing stories and the foods that reflect the world that young people live in today, we can inspire empathy, laughter, and togetherness. Happy cooking, reading, and eating, everyone. So the recipe that I contributed is a very basic one, one that I'm able to cook myself. I have uh, very limited culinary skills. Uh, it's a wild rice sort of side dish. And it's something that I think um, anybody can put together uh, once they're able to procure wild rice, which we call minomen in uh, our culture, in Nishinaabe culture. Uh, and it's something that I've eaten my entire life. Um, these side dishes, you know, are often served with fish or with uh, other wild game like uh, deer or moose. And uh, it takes a little bit longer to uh, cook wild rice, but it's always uh, well worth it because it's so delicious. And I uh, wanted to attach a story to that recipe connected to my family's experience with our name. Uh, my last name anglicized is Rice, uh, which originally was Menominee uh, back in the day. My great-great-grandfather was forced to change his name when he became uh, enrolled as a status Indian here in Canada. So I chose that story and the sort of reclamation that my wife and I have embarked upon in giving our children the original Menominee name because I just wanted to show how uh, colonialism has really altered our identities, uh, really um, damaged them in some ways. Uh, a lot of people, as you know, uh, expressed in my story, have been forced to change their names. Some people chose to change their names for the sake of survival. And these are pretty common experiences, I think, amongst Indigenous nations uh, here on Turtle Island, which we call it, uh, and also uh, cultures around the world that have dealt with colonialism. So uh, my hope is that it can provide a common thread amongst readers. Um, it can, you know, provide something relatable, um, and it can also inform uh, people who may not know just how uh, invasive the spirit of colonialism is and, and how it really alters identities. Uh, so what I hope people take home from the entire collection is that, you know, we there is a spirit of community uh, amongst several cultures and nations. Uh, we do want to come together um, and celebrate our gifts that we have for one another and for our own people. And we want to invite people in to our circle. We want to invite them to our tables uh, to eat our food, to hear our stories and so on. So uh, just once again, I wanted to say chmi uh, It was a great uh, delight and a great honor to be a part of this project. And uh, I know that it will go far and wide and it, it will be a really important uh, tool in enlightening people on different ways of life and different ways to eat. Okay, chmi So for my story in the Anti-Racist Kitchen, I chose Southern Style deviled eggs. And the recipe came from my grandma Inez, 
who grew up in Alabama, she moved up north to New Jersey and she gave the recipe to my mom. And my mom gave the recipe to me and I'm here in California. So every bite of these deviled eggs feels like a little bit of love from my mom, my grandma, my great grandma going back through the generations. It's wonderful. Hmm, what has helped me when I've encountered racism? I think the biggest thing for me is to remember to not take it personally because if someone's going to treat me in a way that is racist, it's pretty clear that they don't even know who I am. Also, not to take what someone else thinks about me to heart so that I think that about myself too. Mm -mm. Um, the most important advice came from my dad, who was born in Panama, um, and he would always say, don't let the turkeys get you down. So if someone's being racist towards you, that's a them problem, not a you problem. Janice Lynn Mather, author and lover of Clinton. And my tip for ending racism is to learn. Read about your own culture, but read about others as well. Be curious, be interested, devour history and stories everywhere you can find them. There's so much beautiful information, so many stories, books, picture books, movies, TV shows, talk to people. <laughs> there are so many people around. Talk to them, listen to them. And also, I think that projects like the Anti-Racist Kitchen are wonderful for bringing an element of pleasure and joy. We all love to eat. We all need to eat. We all love to eat. And there's a lot of serious work with regards to racism, but it's long haul and we need to lighten it up sometimes. Delicious recipes help. Kind. I hope that the reader will understand that even though as a kid, it's about our families and our neighborhoods and our schools, you know, those small communities, there's a whole world out there. The world is large and there's lots of people in it. And all those people have a story to tell and you have a story to tell as well. And when you tell that story about your life, your culture, who you really are, what you really love, it will help people connect with you. It will help you connect with them. And then we can feel kind of like the cover of this book where we're all together sharing something wonderful. You know that old saying, you are what you eat? Well, if that were true, it might be a giant worm. At least according to the bullies at school who made fun of my lunchbox. You see, when I was a kid, my lunch was basically a margarine tub full of chow fun noodles. Now, if you don't know what chow fun noodles are, they're flat, broad, and tasty Chinese noodles. But to the kids at school, they look like a bunch of giant worms. My food was different, just like I was different. But here's the thing, different doesn't mean weird or bad, it's just different. And to me, that's why the Anti-Racist Kitchen book is so important. If more people took a look at things that were different and said, hey, that's kind of cool, instead of, ew, that's kind of weird, well, I think we'd all get along a lot better. My hope is people will read all the stories in this collection, and the next time they see something different, they'll try to learn more about it. Because if you take the time to learn about something that's different, guess what? The world starts to open up. I'm Rosa Nozari, and I'm the illustrator of this book. I'm super, super excited for the Anti-Racist Kitchen to be coming out. I think if there's one tip I can offer and how we can work together to end racism, um, it's that we be willing to listen and learn. Um, there are so many incredible, incredible stories in this anthology. Um, that we can all listen and learn from. Um, and I think we have to have to recognize the importance of slowing down, 
listening to what others' experiences are and learning from those experiences so that we can know better and together we can do better. Now, you're probably wondering, what does it mean to be an editor of a book like this? Well, it is like going into a library or maybe even a room and it's filled with 21 of your favorite friends. And you want to spend some time just listening to their stories. some delicious food while you're listening to the stories. Not only that, you get to look at some images and you get an idea of what the dish is supposed to look like. So that's what this book is like. And you're probably wondering why I wrote a book like this. I wrote a book like this because I wanted to see a book like this on the shelves. And I also had hoped that students, young people uh, that I work with, as I am also a teacher, would go to this bookstore, the library, and they'll pick up a book and find a story that not only uh, resembles or looks like themselves but they'll feel seen the students and the readers reading this will feel seen especially those uh, students and young readers who have experienced racism discrimination microaggressions macroaggressions um, any kind of um, hate or discrimination uh, based on race and difference my hope is that this book would be used also as a guide. Imagine going through the experience and not having any book or instructions on how to deal with it. And this is a reality of so many kids, so many racialized kids uh, who experience racism, incidents of racism, microaggressions, stereotyping, and not given tools to deal with it or other than maybe a caring adult, a parent, who shared how to deal with it if, it if they encounter it. But there are no books that teach a young child to deal with it. We just presume it doesn't happen to kids. And in fact, that's not the case. I experienced my first incidents of discrimination and racism when I was a child. In fact, I was in kindergarten. And often, um, you know, I, I wouldn't know this, but often those kinds of experiences are they shape you they affect you they impact you and often the things that those kids say are coming from home and that is why i have a book like this that i wanted to create it was an idea that i had um, a few years ago and i um, also wanted to celebrate all the wonderful diverse authors that are creating books right now for young people um, and I really wanted to see that and also for anyone who wants to dive in and talk about and have conversations courageous conversations about anti-racism there is a glossary at the back and that will help you to know what some of these big words are some of these small words are some of the words that are used a lot in conversations around racism and I'm so um, proud to and, and humbled because I had um, I've been trusted with these wonderful stories, and I get to share them. I get to protect and share them with the world in this great book. And also. 
I am proud that it was uh, an idea that I came up with and that it is a book that I get to be a part of and share with the world. Um, so I am so excited to share this book with you and it has recipes and photos and illustrations and I think most importantly personal stories just to share with you that you're not alone that you're not alone in going through and experiencing discrimination or even feeling insecure about being um, for particular um, ethnicity and ethnic group um, with faith background or skin color, skin tone, culture, language, and also to get some insight into what people might be experiencing. So this feeling that you um, not only can observe but and be a bystander, but you can also say something and speak up. someone who's different than you and you can sit down and have a delicious meal and that very act by itself can be a way to bring people together. And this book is um, about reclaiming and restoring, resisting and rejoicing and I get to share it with you. So I hope you'll pick up a copy of the Anti-Racist Kitchen 21 Stories and Recipes and you will read it and you will enjoy it and you will share it.